In this video, I will guide you through the proper troubleshooting procedure for a faulty or open blocked vent safety switch or spill switch on the gas boiler simulator. To begin, click the start button on the phone. Next, click on the thermostat icon at the bottom left of the page. This will take you to the thermostat. Once there, click on the system selector switch to make the thermostat call for heat. Now let's go to the boiler to observe the sequence of operations. If we remove the bottom door, we can see that the burners have not ignited, although there is a pilot present in the boiler. Next, let's see if the circulator pump is running. Right-click the circulator to center it in your field of view. As we can see as we zoom in, there is a graphic on the circulator indicating the circulator pump is running. However, the water is not being heated in the boiler. This indicates that we have a problem with the burner circuit, which includes the gas valve as well as several safety switches in series to the gas valve. We will check each one of these using the troubleshooting flowchart on the top left tab of the page. As we can see here, the circulator did in fact start. Our next step is to check the vent damper. The vent damper, shown here, is a motorized damper that closes off the flue passage during the burner's off cycle. This prevents heated air from migrating up the flue and the chimney and out of the house and is an important energy conservation addition to any atmospheric boiler. To verify that the vent damper is in fact open, we can look at the position of the shaft of the vent damper. As you can see, the shaft is vertical, indicating that the damper is open. If the damper was closed, the shaft would be turned flat. Now we can go back to the troubleshooting flowchart and review our next step. Our next step, after verifying that the vent damper is open and that the burners have not lit, is to measure for 24 volts across the B1 and B2 terminals located on the bottom left of the aquastat. This simply will verify that the aquastat is sending 24 volts through the circuit to the gas valve. Remove the digital volt ohm meter from the toolbox by clicking the toolbox tab on the left of the page. Next, let's go to the combination aquastat. Again, we can center it in our field of view by right clicking on it. Zoom in to clearly identify the terminals. We can see the B1 and B2 terminals here at the bottom of the combination aquastat. Click the meter selector dial to the AC volts position and place the meter leads on each of the glowing hotspots at the B1 and B2 terminals. Here we can see that 24 volts is being sent from the combination aquastat to the burner circuit. Our next step is to check the safety switches in the circuit. Store the meter leads back at the meter temporarily by clicking on them. At this point, we may also want to replace the cover of the combination aquastat. Going back to the troubleshooting flowchart, we can see that our next step is to see if we have power at the gas valve. This can be done by simply locating the gas valve here on the side of the boiler, clicking on the meter leads, and placing them on the glowing hot spots at the gas valve. We can see that there is no voltage present at the gas valve, and this is why the gas valve is not opening and sending fuel to the burners. Between the combination aquastat B1 and B2 terminals and the gas valve, there are three important safety switches. One of these switches is our culprit. Let's check each of the three out. The first is the low water cutoff. The low water cutoff, shown here, protects the boiler against a low water condition, such as a leak, and will shut the burners off if low water is sensed in the boiler. Our next safety switch is the spill switch or block vent safety switch, shown here. The block vent safety switch is located inside the draft diverter or draft hood of an atmospheric appliance and protects against conditions such as an obstructed flue or chimney and poor venting design. Our third safety switch is the flame rollout switch. The flame rollout switch is located right in the front of the burners, right here. We'll zoom in and take a look at it. It looks very similar to the block vent safety switch, but the rollout switch protects against delayed ignitions due to poor air circulation or potentially dirty burners. 
If we review the wiring diagram for the gas boiler by clicking this tab here on the right, we can see that all of these safety switches are placed in series to the gas valve. We're going to check each one of these switches. First, let's go back to the low water cutoff. Zoom out, locate the low water cutoff, and remove its cover. Again, you can center it in your field of view by clicking on it. Click on the meter leads and place them at the glowing hot spots on the low water cutoff. We can see that we have zero volts across the low water cutoff. This indicates no difference in electrical potential across the low water cutoff switch and verifies that the switch is in fact in the closed position. Next, we'll store the meter leads temporarily back at the multimeter and we'll go to the flame rollout switch. Again, the rollout switch is in the bottom of the boiler, just in front of the burners, and protects against delayed ignitions due to poor air circulation or dirty burners. Again, click on the leads and place them at the glowing hot spots at the flame rollout switch. Again, zero volts is measured here, indicating that the flame rollout switch is closed and intact. Next, we're going to store the meter leads and proceed to the block vent safety switch or commonly referred to as a spill switch. Again, zoom out and locate the spill switch up inside the draft diverter of the boiler. Zoom in and place the meter leads on the glowing hot spots at the spill switch or block vent safety switch. Here we can see 24 volts is measured across the block vent safety switch, indicating that the switch is open. Prior to replacing this switch, it is extremely important to inspect the flue and chimney for obstructions as well as proper vent design. A spill switch or block vent safety switch should never be just reset without verifying these conditions first. Now we can replace the block vent safety switch, but again, only after verifying proper vent design and that there are no obstructions in the flue or chimney. Put the digital multimeter back in the toolbox. Turn the power off by clicking on the system disconnect switch and click on the block vent safety switch to replace it. The repair here is going to cost $150 and we are going to proceed. And as we can see, this corrects the problem. Last but not least, replace all covers on components as well as the boiler. Clean the work area by clicking on the broom. Turn the service disconnect switch back to the on position and don't forget to return thermostat settings back to their original setting. Good luck!